For just under an hour, Trump talked with a military-heavy audience in North Carolina about issues from immigration and hurricane relief to veterans' affairs and international relations. At an event space Friday in Fayetteville, near Fort Liberty, among the world's largest military installations, thousands of attendees sat in tiers of seats and folding chairs as Trump took several questions from people, all of whom had some connection to the military. One Vietnam veteran, who moderator Representative Anna Paulina Luna of Florida said had written Trump a letter after the July assassination attempt in Butler, gave the former president his Purple Heart, saying Trump deserved it. Trump bookend his remarks by saying that he would revert the name of Fort Liberty to Fort Bragg. The Department of Defense renamed the installation last year, part of an initiative to shed the names of Confederate soldiers, motivated by the 2020 anti-racism protests over the murder of George Floyd by police. And I know that you talk about the bad economy, you talk about all of the costs and the costs are so bad. To me, the worst is the border, because it's like what they're doing is they're destroying our country. And it's not easy to get them out. We're going to have the largest deportation in history. I'm not proud to say that either, but it's it's a tough thing to do. 287 big missiles, ballistic missiles were shot into Israel. Every single one of them was taken down. Well, why shouldn't we have that? And it's all going to be made in the United States. You know, it was our technology. It's all going to be made in the U.S. And a lot of it's going to be made in a place called North Carolina, if you don't mind, okay? But I think I just learned the secret to winning absolutely and by massive margins. I'm going to promise to you, as I said at the beginning, that we're going to change the name back to Fort Bragg, because I think when that word gets out, I just see this great looking soldier just accidentally said Fort Liberty and he got almost booed the hell out of the place. That, that was very, that was not good. I mean, it's the most, it's the biggest risk we have. Nuclear weapons, the power of nuclear weapons, the power of weaponry. You know, I rebuilt the entire military, jets, everything. I built it, including nuclear, and I hated to build the nuclear. But I got to know firsthand the power of that stuff, and I'll tell you what, uh, we, we have to be totally prepared. We have to be absolutely prepared. We have a great military, and we have a military that's not woke. You may have a few people on the top that are woke, and we're going to get rid of them so damn fast, your head's going to explode. I, could, I couldn't thank anybody more deserving thank of you. a Purple Heart. Thank you very much. You took it. You laid down there, you got back up, and the first words out of your mouth was fight, fight, fight. You didn't even have anything to shoot back at. So I didn't mind being hit that way. I don't want to be hit that way. This way. This way. If I didn't make the turn, I would have been hit the other way. That's no good. That would not have been too good. But it is, it is true, and I got uh, very lucky, and maybe it wasn't so much luck. Maybe there's something else, right? Maybe there's something else up there. I think I'm going to stand. This chair is the most uncomfortable chair I've ever. It, first of all, it spins. And the one thing I don't want is to fall on my ass, because that's going to be, that will be the only story. They'll say, sir, you did great. Too bad you fell. That would be the only story. So I'm not sitting in that sucker. I think it's a booby trap. That was put there by Kamala. You know what they're not talking about? And you know, Anna, you know what they're not talking about? They're not talking about something else that's very important. They are doing, this is Katrina, they are doing the worst job on a hurricane that any administration has ever done. And these people don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky called once again for cooperation in combating the Russian air threat in his nightly address on Thursday. Zelensky called out the lack of decisions on joint operations and joint defense, adding that what works in the skies of the Middle East and helps Israel's defense can work just as well in the skies of our part of Europe in Ukraine. 
ми бачимо, що однією з головних причин дефіциту безпеки у небі України, і зокрема поруч із кордонами НАТО, наших сусідів, є дефіцит рішень про спільну роботу, про спільний захист. Те, що працює у небі близького Сходу і допомагає обороні Ізраїлю, може працювати і в небі нашої частини Європи, в Україні. Так само допомагаючи рятувати життя. Усім нам в Європі однаково це потрібно. Україна в Альянсі і не лише заради більшої спільної сили, не лише тому, що це просто справедливо та заслужено для українців, а ще й тому, що тільки завдяки повній інтеграції України, чіткому нашому положенню в Євроатлантиці можна надійно прибрати стару і злочину російську спокусу ламати порядок життя в Європі.